My name is Sylvester McCoy, and you're watching Dr. Freedom. Folks, Dr. Freedom, really times from Dr. News, news from in and around the universe that may or may not affect you on a strange astral, almost temporal spatial level to the point you might take a dump and time travel back to the caveman days where they might think you're the god of almighty stool. But okay, um, let's get into it. Let's get on to it. Um, like I said, there's still a lot of people freaking out over the ratings and stuff like that. And it just amazes the living crap out of me, especially when you go back and look at the actual numbers and stuff. And just to give you an idea, I was um, scanning around over on Doctor TV, um, the, or sorry, not Doctor TV, but DoctorNews.net. And if you go to their guide, they give you the average ratings for like all the way back to 1963. So before we get started on the actual, let's just do that really quickly, shall we? Here's the average ratings for the revival all the way up till now. In 2005, 14 episodes, average 8.8, 8.08 million. Average, you know, and just follow it for yourself. I'm going to leave a link for this so you can go find it later. But right now, after nine episodes, series 11 is averaging almost 8 million viewers. 7.95, and that's even with the dip in the overnights this week. So please quit telling me the sky is falling. Quit running around the net trying to say, get woke, go broke, because you sound like a freaking idiot. Because when you look at last year, the average rating was 5.64 million. Before that, 7.83. For that in 2015, look, 6.16. You see what I'm getting at here? Don't tell me Doctor Who is falling down, dying, screaming, you know, when the numbers have actually improved. Now, it could be as a result of the Sunday move, but a lot of people are just, you know, trying to find excuses to whine and complain. And you have to sit back and wonder, what is the excuse? Well, I don't think it's because everybody who has a negative opinion of the show is misogynistic, but I got some bad news for you. There is a chunk of them that are. There have been people who've been grinding out the same organ grinders bullshit routine ever since Jodie Whittaker was announced as the doctor. But then you add on the folks who seem to think that it's all part of an SJWPC conspiracy. They're trying to force you to watch women in powerful roles. That's funny. When I was a kid, we had a show called Isis, female superhero. I don't think there was even a, was there an agenda back then? And I didn't see everybody flag waving and screaming in the newspapers editorials when Xena Warrior Princess came out and it was a smash hit. It's just TV and all that goes through cycles. And now it's become a point where, you know, I think what really prompted it off was when the Wonder Woman movie really hit. And I think that was one of the factors. And now you're seeing this resurgence of more strong female heroes. Like, I didn't see anybody claiming that Ripley and Aliens was enforcing a PCSJW agenda. I just thought she was out there to kill a bunch of alien ass. But maybe that's just me. Maybe it's because I'm running through my life with happy little side blinders on. But once again, please, just sit down and think before you type out half the stuff you're typing out. Or just because some jackass on YouTube, like me included, you know, it's like, I've, he's got tens of thousands of views. He must be right. No, it just means he's paying good for advertising. Ding. All right, so let's get into the news. Let's get into the stuff you want to hear. But I just thought I'd open with that because it just amazed the crap out of me. So, wham, here we go. Let's start off. It takes you away overnight viewing figures. That's right. Watched by 5.07 million viewers, shared 25% of the total viewing audience, which made Doctor the fifth highest rated program for Sunday and 27th on the week so far. 
which is kind of weird because I think that's as far down as it's gotten. But you have to remember, this week again was dominated by I'm a Celebrity, Get Make Me Relevant, which took seven, or actually I should say I'm a former Celebrity, Get me, Make Me Relevant, which took seven out of the top ten places for the week, with each episode getting over eight million watching. Strictly Come Butt Looking still took the top position for Saturday with 10 million viewers. Now, you see, once again, but even look at the X Factor for this week. X Factor only scored 5.53 million viewers. And it's like, really? <laughs> even Dynasties didn't break 6 million. So I'm not going to make excuses for it, but I said, let's judge for yourself. It looks kind of weird, don't it? But all right. And it, it, frog or not, I think we'll live with it. All right. The Witch Finders, official ratings, that's right. Had an official rating of 7.21 million viewers, according to figures released by the broadcasting, blah, blah, B-A-R-B, you know it has. And they break down here how they got to that and whatnot. So top again for that week was Monday's edition of I'm, I'm a Former Celebrity, Make Me Irrelevant, and that's 13 million watching. And the Witch Finders, get ready for this, AI of 81. And that's not doing too bad, considering I think a couple of weeks ago we had a 79. So if you're in the 80s, you're doing okay. Moving forward, Worlds Collide ticket date announced. That's right. Uh, BBC Studios and Escape Hunt have announced the on-sale date of tickets for the upcoming Doctor Who Live Escape game, Worlds Collide. Now, from the 6th of December, fans can apply to be one of the first to try out the hotly anticipated game, which will be arriving in cities across the UK at Escape Hunt locations from December and early 2019. So here you go. Here's your dates. Here's all your info you need to know. And please visit the website linked here for more information. Now, also keep in mind, I forgot to mention this. Apparently, from what I'm hearing, shipping dates on the American version for Series 19 have, have gone forward. So I heard some people have actually received it. So now i got to go check my own box, see if mine's gone. All right. So Doctor Series 11 soundtrack, The Shrine. And basically, this is revealed that Here's the titles for it, and also it's been revealed that, yes, in February, I believe, 19th, not February, I mean, it's February of 2019, duh, sorry, I've screwed my brain up, that this will be coming out. So keep your eyes out for it. I believe that's what they said. But here are the titles of the tracks on the Series 11 soundtrack. Now, this has a lot of people fuming because where the hell is the Series 10 soundtrack? I ain't even got that out yet, and they're already putting out, you know, titles and all that stuff for the Series 11 one. Oh. Here's some lovely, lovely photos for next week's episode, The Battle of Ron Skorov, Carlos Alvaro. And if you want to go take a look at these, boom, there'll be a link below in the description box that will take you there. Now, remember, we already talked about these photos a while back before the video got pulled down. Because we a you know, big hot point of interest is what's going on with the box here, what's happening with that. But if you keep scanning back, this will do. Also, another point of interest, notice how everybody in this episode has their own little nifty side of the head implant there on their temple. See that little nifty thing there? So if you want to go take a look through these, bam, 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 here you go, over here on the BBC America website. Moving forward, Dr. Who stars claim the show is too politically correct. All right, Dr. Who stars say claims that the show is too politically correct are bizarre, and that's Amanda Gill and Taz and Cole. Say the storylines create conversations about broader issues. Now, this is their take on it about how, like I said, there's some group of people out there who seem to think there's some top secret agenda to make you watch politically correct television. I'd be more worried about the guys who are conspiring to take the money out of your retirement fund than worry about what your TV show is telling you. Really, people. All right, Series 11 spoilers. I am finished. Viewers fuming after terrible monster reveal. And a lot of people were having a fit about the damn frog. I'm sorry, but I look at it this way. How else do you conceptualize a sentient universe? How do you really put that down? You can't exactly stick a guy out there with bumps on his head like the female, you know, the, the alien wake of the bumpy-headed alien of the week they used to have on you know, Star Trek Next Generation. You can't do that. And I think the frog worked brilliantly in that case. But originally also, remember, there was supposed to be that Mr. Stuffluffigus Hosenose guy played by Paul Sturgis who did not show up that was edited out. And we had to sit here and wonder if that was what that, you know, in place of the frog. So, but remember, it's a bad, bad looking frog. It was meant to be. It was a surreal image. You see what I mean? Ah, oh, 
what's going to happen in the Doctor Who finale, and this is just some nice, friendly speculation based off stuff going on, you know, and what do you call it? What will the episode be like? You know, a lot of, just a lot of questions you're probably already asking, and also a few photos here and there if you want to go take a look at it on, over on Radio Time. Sorry. It's just, oh, God, I'm tripping my over, over my own brain today. I just can't believe some of the shit I'm seeing out there. Okay, Doctor steps onto the battlefield in the Doctor Who series finale trailer. And this is, I believe, their little bit of a trailer breakdown. Gives you a little bit more info, but not a whole lot. But I decided to add it from Digital Spy. All right, Doctor Who star to read CBB story. That's right, Jodie Whittaker is the latest celebrity to read a CBB's bedtime story. And she'll, be, she'll read Ada Twist, Scientist, the third in a series of books by Andrew Beatty and David Roberts later this month. Here's all the info you need on that. Okay. So, no, no comment. All right. Jodie Wicker's Doctor Who series had this secret code name during auditions. And if you now remember back when the series first came back, they were filming it under the name Torchwood, and which later went off to become its own thing. But that, that it was just basically an anagram of Doctor Who. And it was what you call it, Plain Hitters. Plane Hitters was the title. Now, I remember back when they were auditioning like uh, Amy Pond, Karen Gillan, when they're for her role, they had it under the title of a production called Panic Moon, which was an anagram of Companion. So, Plane Hitters, though, is pretty original. 15 mind bending questions we have after it takes you away. And the first one's one I actually thought of during the Omega Falls, which caught me off guard, which is why did Eric bother barricading the house? And I hate to sound like a cruel, e mean, evil bastard, but you could have saved yourself a lot of effort, went outside and just banged on the side of the house and claimed you barricaded it. And also putting the barricades on the outside, can't does that make it easier for people to just rip it down if it's people? And even if it's bears, bears don't climb very well, so why would you barricade the second story? They run like a mother. Oh, yeah, they do. Your average bear, I think, can hit about 30 to 40 miles an hour on the ground, something like that. All right, so Bradley Walsh, why I don't want to play the doctor, and this is his reasons why, you know, even if he was approached to do the role, this is why, you know, I don't think I could do it. So, you know, nice, cute little thing going on there. Moving forward, Doctor star Peter Davison thinks he dodged a bullet by quitting when he did. He says, the show was handled very badly in the late 80s, and I don't blame him. That's actually a very accurate depiction. You know, before he, after he left and all that, matter of fact, it was during the time he was there even, it was starting to look like a train wreck. It really was. JNT, ooh, he didn't, he ruffled a lot of feathers. You got to say that. All right, Dr. Star has described the mysterious 2018 finale in just three words. I didn't see anything too spoilery on this one, so I'll leave it to you to read. And once again, here's the average ratings. I'll link this to you. I'll make it probably the last one. So if you want to go look these up for yourself, like doctornews.net has been compiling this stuff for quite a while. And they have a very extensive guide, I have to admit. And I just stumbled onto this by accident. I thought, you know, why is everybody freaking out? It's like you're doing, what, like two or three million better than you did last year? So once again, when, if you have hosts jumping up and down, screaming, the sky is falling and all that, then, you know, chances are they're just putting up stuff to get ratings and to get viewers and to target a certain audience that feels that they're not being heard. Now, I try to keep a positive outlook on things. I do really do. But I do have to admit, there, there just seems to be some things missing from Series 11. And I'm planning on after the New Year's Day special, maybe the following weekend, or we may take a weekend off and do it after that, because I'm going to be going on to a grueling new schedule starting in March. So I want to try to get as much stuff done before then, because things are going to get really weird at work. But I want to do a Series 11 review, and I want everybody to like grade it like A to F instead of 1 to 10. And I'm not kidding. Right now, they're looking at maybe a C plus, at least in my opinion. Because even though I feel it's doing okay, it's just something seems to be missing. And I can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe if we sit down and get together talk about what we've seen and all that. Also, one last note. Um, this went up on Doctor Who Production News this morning. Um, apparently, set building is going on right now at MOD Carowind, which is a military base. 
And as I said before, that's how they got a lot more clever about doing location shooting and all that was by doing it on the grounds of military bases, private land and all that where you can't get at. And I don't know why, but everybody was still going off on set reporters in the last couple of years because chances are a lot of the stuff that got put out that you didn't want to see was from one person and they know who they are. So everybody, well, take care of yourselves. Have a good night. See you on the flip side. Later.